The second step in the Vivid model is identity. So just to review very quickly, very quickly, Vivid stands for vision, information, I'm sorry, vision, identity, voice, information, and development. And so we've been talking about vision all week, and I want to move on to identity. Uh, And I want to start with a question. Are you going through an identity crisis? (laughs) Ouch. I went through one last year. Severe. I had uh, suddenly found myself in a caregiver role. Um, Honored that my husband would trust me with his precious mother, who is about to turn 100 this year. But I wasn't prepared for the trauma of Uh, and isolation of caregiving and being in a new city and not knowing anyone and being by myself. It was a lot all at the same time. And so I mentioned that because that caused an identity crisis when I hit 60, that, uh, that milestone birthday all by myself. And literally I was just this close to being curled up in a ball in a corner. <laughs> Didn't get there, but I was almost there. Um, and, you know, I remember just kind of at my worst texting some girlfriends and just like, I'm 60 years old and I have nothing to show for it. And I'm a failure. And nothing, you know, everything is wrong and nothing matters and I'm a wreck. <laughs> and uh, so that was a crisis. And what I realized is we go through identity crises crises at different stages of our lives and you know it can cause us to just question what we value what we believe who we always thought we were what we trusted what we can count on and uh, that's a miserable miserable place to be but whether you are going through a severe crisis of of identity or if you are just at a you're at a a turning point where you you want to see some major things happen in your life either way the key to defining your or establishing your identity is asking yourself who do you think you are and And then, you know, there's kind of three things, three ways to define, to establish your identity. One is examination. I use assessments like a fiend. And I like taking them, whether they're short quizzes or whether they're, you know, more in depth. All of the, all of the famous ones, you know, I've used them all practically. But what I like about them and why I'm continually talking about them is because they give you a way to examine, to take inventory of your personality, your talents, your habits, your instinctive response to pressure. It helps you get data about you and about your personality that you can use to help you just get a sense of who you are. And you can walk in the world more confidently with this information. And you can also use it to help you understand other people as well. Because as you learn more about yourself, it's easier to be more compassionate and more understanding about other people. And that helps you in all your relationships. Um, And so there's a mutual benefit there. And the other step is exploration. So... Once you get data around who you are, how you're built, how you're made, your strengths, your thinking patterns, then you want to explore. Give yourself the opportunity to experience different things. To You'll, you'll never know how you could really employ your gifts if you're not using them in some way. So exposing yourself to different things, different activities, different environments, different experiences, different jobs, different even other people and the way they think. 
that is going to help you get a sense of who you are and how you can exist in the world. And then the last step is experimentation. So exploration is exposing yourself to all kinds of things that are available in the world. Whereas experimentation is when you get engaged, you get involved, you start, you give yourself an opportunity to be immersed in something different that will challenge you and help you make some decisions about what you value, who you are, where you're going, what matters to you, how you and, and how you make a difference in the world. And all of these things come, become a part of who you are. So who you think you are is really a loaded question. It's, it could take a lifetime to fully understand because we all change, we grow. What I wanted 20 years ago is not the same thing I want now. Now my vision has endured. The, the difference I wanna make in the world the that big giant big hairy vision project goal objective that future that i see i've seen the same future for the most part but the vision of it has gotten the view of it has gotten more vivid because i'm growing i'm changing i'm working i'm learning so your identity like everything else has so much also to do with not only what you believe about yourself but your experiences and what you do. Those experiences are part of helping you understand who you are. So I just want to encourage you to take the time. I've run into so many people that could not describe themselves, could not effectively introduce themselves. I, yeah, I struggle with it as well. It's difficult to do, but we have to make a decision that we're going to invest time in it. Now, I love Galatians 6. I want to say it's 4 and 5 from the message translation. And it says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you've been given. And then sink yourself into that. And verse 5 says, don't be impressed with yourself. And don't compare yourself with others. It says, because each of us must do our creative best with what we've been given. So that tells me that God expects us to understand who we are. You know, the, 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 the new commandment says to love God, right? We love God with all our heart and mind. And then it says, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But the presupposition there is that you love yourself. So we're supposed to love God and then love ourselves. And if we don't love ourselves, we can't love our neighbor. So loving yourself is about, or you determining or defining, establishing your identity is the foundation for how you love others as you love yourself. <laughs> 